If you write C or C++, you care about control, predictability, and performance. You may not let go of either of them because of that, but whether you like it or not, alternatives will come knocking on your door and you'll need to be prepared to understand those alternatives. And what better way to do that than by looking at one of the most hated languages alongside one of the most niche and C-like languages, Rust and Odin. Who's really serving systems devs and winning over the C, C++ crowd? Let's put them on the bench with real criteria, not vibes. Both target the closer to the metal space. Rust offers rigorous safety, like ownership and barring, well, depending on who you ask, and a large ecosystem. Odin offers simplicity, data-first ergonomics, such as the defer and allocator-aware patterns, and frictionless, sort of, C interrupt. Your pick depends on which friction you'd rather pay, compile time rules or runtime discipline. First, let's look at control and predictability. Rust makes ownership, aliasing, and lifetimes explicit. The compiler enforces them so you can reason about allocations and borrows up front. Odin keeps C-level control with modern, explicit constructs. The language stays small and direct. Here's where this might come up. Suppose you need tight loops over large SOA AOS data. If you want enforced non-aliasing and borrow rules, Rust gives you guardrails. If you want minimal ceremony and you're already disciplined about layout and allocators, Odin is very direct. Speaking of guardrails, let's talk about each language's safety model and failure modes. Rust's headline is memory safety without the GC. Send and sync and the borrow checker push many bugs to compile time. Unsafe is explicit and auditable. Odin trades guardrails for control. Strong typing and defer help, but you own correctness. Where might this come into play? Suppose a daemon that must run unattended against hostile inputs for a year. Rust reduces certain classes of foot guns. With Odin, you can move fast, but testing and review must be airtight. You probably could see this coming, but you can also see a big difference in the build and tooling experience. Rust has cargo, which gives you projects and workspaces, testing, docs, and reproducible dependency resolution via cargo.lock. This is a great modern implementation of something you usually have to add after the fact, but it's built right in. You can also benchmark with the native Rust tool in a couple different ways. On stable versions, you can use Criterion. On nightly only versions, the built-in bench route is how you would do that. Odin, on the other hand, is a tool chain that is intentionally simple. There's no official package manager by design. So teams often vendor or sub-module what they need. Looks a lot like old school C or modern day Zig on that front. How would this affect your workflow? Well, if, say, you have a poly repo with strict CI and reproducibility requirements, Cargo's conventions are a win. If you have embedded systems or a game shop that prefers vendor dependencies, you may like Odin's minimal surface. Since we in many ways still live in a C-dominated world, we should talk about interopt and portability for these languages. Rust has first-class C, FFI patterns and a solid cross-compile story, and you get many targets and crates that can manage this. Should be noted, though, that it's not as seamless as other languages like Zig when it comes to interoperability. Odin is more seamless-ish. It's designed to feel natural at the C boundary. You use foreign import slash foreign to make linking straightforward, or at least as straightforward as linking directly to pre-compiled libraries can be. You can even use C++ typically via a C shim. As such, each can work in different scenarios. Multi-ecosystem stacks, WebAssembly, client Linux services, window tools benefit from Rust's mature crates and cross-compilation. Surgical drops into large C code bases feel natural in Odin. Let's talk concurrency and scaling. Rust's send sync encode thread safety invariants. 
The ecosystem centers around async runtimes. Tokyo, for example, is the common default, plus classic threads and atomics. Odin's core library includes threads, mutexes, and channels for MPMC and MPSC patterns, straightforward to build classic worker scheme. You get freedom and responsibility. Both end up serving concurrent and scaled systems well. High throughput services under constant refactors benefit from Rust types slash async ecosystem that helps keep data races in check. A tightly controlled game loop with a few workers benefits from Odin's primitives that are simple to reason about. This is all great technical stuff, but what about using it in a real-world dev team that's trying to maintain this? Russ, learning curve is real. The borrow checker is a pain to manage, especially as your project becomes more complex. However, if you get past that, you do get some long-term benefits. Invariants live in the type system and refactors stay precise. Odin onboards C, C++ devs fast. The language is small and readable, but discipline in tests and reviews carries more weight. But of course, if you come from the C, C++ world anyway, that should be pretty common there and less of an issue for you. So how do these two powerhouse languages really operate? Neither language magically outruns a well-written C equivalent. The data layout and algorithms dominate. But you still get really good performance from both of these, especially if optimized well and, for Rust, if you go into unsafe mode. So what are the use cases where each are really good? Basically, anything that benefits really well from Lean C will do well with Odin, which is emulating a lot of its principles, but with a modern, more Pascal-esque touch. So that embedded firmware, highly optimized game or game engine, and anything needing to really give you the edge when you want it, but without C. Rust is pretty good for everything else with caveats. Relatively complex applications, CLI, uh, high performance services that don't need everything hyper optimized will do really well with Rust out of the box as long as you can win your battle against the borrow checker. A few other mini points to make on how each differentiates. For compile times, Rust pays for analysis. Odin's compiler is lean. For errors, Rust diagnostics are famously helpful. Odin keeps errors clear and to the point. Community? Well, as we mentioned, Rust's ecosystem is large and well-documented. Odin's is smaller and data-oriented by design. So let's say you're pretty sure you want to migrate to one of these. How do you do it? From going from C to Rust, wrap a boundary with a C ABI, keep the unsafe code small, and let the borrow checker guide patterns. From going from C to Odin, mirror current layouts, centralize allocators, use defer for cleanups, and vendor trusted libraries. And what if you're wrong? Well, it's not exactly costless. Choosing Rust wrong means overpaying the upfront learning slash compile time tax. Choosing Odin wrong means shipping fast, but taking an operational risk you must offset with process. So do be careful and do your research and POCs ahead of time before going all in. So all in all, we can say this. Rust serves you by making whole classes of mistakes impossible without opt-ins. Odin serves you by getting out of your way and mapping intent to hardware with minimal ceremony. Pick the one that removes the friction that actually slows your team down, and don't let the hype carry you away, especially if your C and C++ systems are fine. Thanks for watching! What do you think? Do you think Rust actually will serve your systems fine? Is Odin the clear winner here, or is this just wrong? Should we just use C, C++, or Zig? Leave your comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more Techie Talk from the Techie Shop. If you like this video, watch this video here for more Tech Talk.